Military experts have already called the war in Ukraine, the era of cautious tanks, due to the high density of drones along the entire front line. However, even this did not prevent the Leopard 2 tank from the 33rd Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces from destroying the enemy assault group in the Kurikov area, Forbes reports. On November 12, on the outskirts of Kurikov, Ukrainian forces stopped an enemy assault group with the help of armored vehicles. On this section of the front, the Russian Ministry of Defense threw occupiers from the 102nd and 103rd motorized regiments into battle. The goal was to capture Kurikov in order to then begin putting pressure on Pokrovsk. The Kremlin is trying to capture Toritz, Kurikov and Pokrovsk before Trump's inauguration. At the same time, Ukrainian defenders are ready to do everything possible and impossible to prevent Putin's plans from coming true. Until a couple of weeks ago, both sides were trying to keep tanks out of the fight. The skies above Ukrainian positions are a constant battlefield, David Kurichenko wrote for the Center for European Policy Analysis in Washington. Enemy drones are hunting for large targets on the battlefield. The war in Ukraine has changed the tactics of tank battles, when they try not to engage in direct combat, but to strike from afar with direct fire. That Ukrainian tanks are fighting at close range again speaks to the urgency of this phase of the war. But it may also indicate an improvement in Ukrainian tactics, especially when it comes to smoke screens. Wind speed and direction, time of day, humidity, terrain, gunnery skills, etc. are all factors that need to be taken into account when laying a smoke screen. It's probably one of the most difficult things to coordinate, said Ascent analyst Perpetua. Ukrainian tank battalions equipped with ex-German Leopard 1A5S and Leopard 2A4S as well as ex-Soviet models, T-64s and T-80s, it seems, have been fighting around Kuriko for weeks. As recently as a few weeks ago, it was rare for tanks from either side of the wider war to risk a direct attack on enemy forces. The sky above the Ukrainian positions is a constant battleground of its own, David Kurichenko wrote for the Center for European Policy Analysis in Washington. Enemy and friendly drones crisscross the airspace, hunting for valuable targets like heavy armor and artillery. This aerial cat-and-mouse game has fundamentally altered tank tactics, Kurichenko added. To survive, tankers shifted to an indirect fire support role, angling their main guns to lob shells at targets miles away. That's safer for the tankers, but also less destructive to the enemy. That Ukrainian tanks are fighting at close range again speaks to the urgency of this phase of the war. But it may also speak to an improvement in Ukrainian tactics, especially when it comes to smoke. The administration of President Joe Biden allowed Ukraine to use weapons provided by the United States to strike deep into the territory of the Russian Federation. It is noted that the first long-range strikes will take place in the coming days. This was reported by sources for Reuters, without disclosing details for security reasons. France and Great Britain have also authorized long-range strikes against Russia. It should be noted that President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko was very much afraid of the supply of long-range Atoms missiles. It is very dangerous that Atoms long-range missiles have been allocated, the dictator panicked after beginning deliveries of these weapons to Ukraine. Now these missiles will hit targets outside Ukrainian territory. Almost the entire territory of Belarus is available for Atoms missiles, which Ukraine received from the US. Lukashenko's palace is among them. The missiles will not reach only the objects in the north of our country. It is noteworthy that Russian propagandist Olga Skabiva also said on the air of her program that Atoms missiles can reach Minsk. 100 Atoms missiles. Let's look at this map again and note. Bryansk, Kaluga, Oral, Kursk, Lipetsk, Voronezh, Belgorod, Lugansk, Rostov-on-Don, Sevastopol and Minsk, the capital of Belarus. All of this falls within a radius of 300 kilometers and all of it is now available for the enemy's armed forces to hit, Skabiva got upset. Getting these weapons at our disposal will significantly strengthen the combat capabilities of our missile units. 
They will become a real problem for the enemy's air defense, and a powerful fleet of anti-aircraft missile systems will allow them to be used along the entire length of the front. Priority targets will be Russian logistics and communication centers, launch sites for missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles on the TOT, the military media center of Ukraine said. On the morning of November 17, multi-role F-16 fighters of the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine actively participated in repelling a large-scale combined air attack carried out by Russian troops. In total, around 120 missiles and 90 drones were launched. The Russian Defense Ministry reported that it had hit all its targets, saying that its attack was on essential energy infrastructure supporting the Ukrainian military-industrial complex. Russian terrorists once again want to scare us with cold and lack of light, was how President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky put it. As reported by Volodymyr Zelensky, Ukrainian pilots in F-16s shot down about 10 air targets. Our F-16 pilots shot down about 10 air targets, Zelensky said, emphasizing the important role of American fighters in protecting the country's airspace. The information was also confirmed by one of the largest Ukrainian telegram channels, Mikolai Vanek, noting the positive impact of the F-16 on the course of military operations. While all the data on hits and shootdowns is being collected, I can only say one thing, the FKs showed themselves to be very strong, a ray of positivity in all this nonsense, the channel administrator wrote. According to preliminary data, Russian troops used a wide range of weapons, including air, land and sea-based missiles, as well as Shahid-type attack drones. In total, the Ukrainian Armed Forces radio-technical troops recorded 210 enemy air targets, including 120 missiles and 90 UAVs. The active use of F-16s has demonstrated their high efficiency in conditions of combined attacks. Ukrainian military analysts emphasize that the presence of these fighters allows for a significant strengthening of the country's air defense, especially in the fight against cruise missiles and kamikaze drones. Russia's latest massive attack, despite its scale and the use of various types of weapons, was successfully repelled thanks to the coordinated work of the air defense and the new capabilities provided to Ukrainian pilots on the F-16. The introduction of F-16s into combat operations confirms their importance in the defense of Ukraine and underscores the importance of ongoing military assistance from Western allies. Ukrainian officials fear the most recent strike could signal another concerted Russian attempt to deplete the power grid as winter arrives. Having already endured two and a half bitter winters since Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022, Ukrainians are bracing themselves for another.